Well, hello again, boys and girls. And many of you might be looking at this as my next, my next hunting bow, but no, not really. This is the end uh, cap feature that they put on the uh, deck lid uh, for the hatch on the, uh, on the Model Y. And uh, if we come in close, you'll see that this is made out of carbon fiber. So um, we had the BMW i3 in here, and that was 100% carbon fiber. But this is a different uh, type of a process. The, uh, the carbon fiber that was used for the BMW i3 was uh, using um, RTM, resin transfer molded, or molding I should say. And what we're looking at here, this is uh, over molded straight onto a plastic substrate. So this product is really held in. Um, you can see little pieces of copper that's a little tool we use to get this thing off the, the deck lid. And uh, <clears throat> believe me, it was tough to get this off. So I thought that you might, uh, might get a, a kick out of seeing this. And carbon fiber, to me, if your volumes are low enough, uh, if you're around 50,000, 60,000 a year, carbon fiber makes a good alternative because the tooling is so inexpensive. So let's move on to something that's a little more thrilling. <clears throat> And what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the boards. So let's have a look at, uh, at these two controller boards. These are the uh, body control modules. And uh, this one here is from the Model 3. And you can see that it's heavily populated. But let's take a look at the Model Y. So some people look at um, continuous improvement. But what I like to see is continual improvement. And that's what we see here. This board here is, you can see it right there, a Gen 3, Generation 3 on, the, uh, on, this, uh, on this controller board. This one right here, you can see is Gen 1. Actually, it doesn't even have a sign. It just says, it just says left controller. Let's take a look at this from a lot of different areas. Let's, let's have a look at this. Look at this, boys and girls. All that and all this has been chopped from the Tesla Model Y. This, this, board, this board, when we look at it, it you don't have to be uh, an electronics engineer to see that this board is much more heavily populated than that one is. There's more going on in the Tesla Y but just take a look at that. And then when we flip it over, wow. Again, you don't have to be an electronics engineer to see how this board's been utilized on the new Tesla Model Y. Now, we don't know what's going on with the Tesla Model 3, but I do know one thing for sure. The Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y are not the same, uh, we're not the same kind of car. When I took apart, or when we took apart the Model 3, we noticed that, hey, this looks like it could be populated. Well, they did populate it, and then some. And let's just take a look at some of, the, uh, some of the smaller things. I was very critical of how many threaded fasteners they had. Well, here's a threaded fastener right here. And they've eliminated it. They've taken that off in favor of a snap fit like that. Something similar or akin to what you'd have in your own house. The Model 3 and the Model Y, I think the Model Y is continual improvement. Not waiting for a year-end type of uh, introduction and whatnot, but continuously going over and over again. How do we make it a little better? Let's implement it. How do we make it a little better? Let's implement it. So that this and that may be backward compatible to each other, but we can't tell right now. What we want to really do is, is have a look at what, what they've done before and what they've done now. So without sounding like I'm uh, <clears throat> going to go on and on about this, for those of you out there in the OEM world or the circuit board world or the control world or electronics design world, you, you better have a look closely at what's going on here. That's why we highly recommend you email sales at leandesign.com. I already think that uh, 
the test, when I saw this, I said that they were about five years ahead. After looking at that, I am not sure how much further ahead they are now, because again, we're looking at chips that mm, it's going to take us a while to recognize. Our best people, the best people at Monroe for controls, the guys that work on DOD projects and whatnot, they're the guys that are analyzing this stuff now. We've gone beyond the normal stuff that we would find with, uh, with uh, a normal electronic circuit boards and whatnot. And now we're into, um, this is really exotic stuff. So we were going to show you a little bit about this. This is what the reports look like. Um, this is all electronics. Everything you see here, this is about 600, 500, 600 pages. All this is talking about electronics. And this is the old Model 3. Now, the new Model Y is coming out here shortly. You might want to find out what's in your budget and, uh, and how, much, how much you really want to know about uh, what the competition is. Because this, and by the way, you can write down the old price if you like, but we're already finding out that Tesla has done some things to improve, and that price is probably going to be higher uh, than, than what the new prices are because they've done such a good job. So let's, uh, let's go over here and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the steering gear. So we haven't really gone into too much detail about some of the things that were, um, that were carryover as far as, as far as the car is concerned. This is a carryover part. That's what that little green dot means. But it does have a couple of features that changed a little bit. And one of them are, the, uh, are these Tyron ends. So we look at the ends of the shaft, or the ends of these uh, adjusting shafts here. And they've, they've been changed or modified a little bit. But the rest of this stuff right in here is similar or exactly the same as what you find in the Model 3 for the uh, steering system. So over here we have what you would see inside if you could take it apart. And these are the components that basically connect to your steering wheel. This, this uh, worm gear will fit kind of like that into the rack. And so when you turn, this will move back and forth. That's how your uh, steering system works. So this is the belt that, uh, that runs between the motor and the, uh, the drive mechanism. And then these two uh, components, these two gears, will fit inside like this. And as this one turns, this one will turn a lot more slowly. Now, really and truly, this is kind of standard, but this is not. And this is the controller board for the steering system. Now, what's interesting about this is if you cut it right down the middle, you'll see that half the board, that half of the board, and this half of the board they're basically populated twice. And that means that this is a redundant system. A redundant system is like what you have on an airplane. If one thing goes down, something else is going to come in to take its place. This is just like that type of, uh, that type of design. So a redundant design for steering is a real good situation. You can never tell when something happens, when a sensor goes out or part of the board has a problem. This thing here, it's got double of everything. Now, with this inside here and, uh, and looking at some of these other controller boards, I cannot say enough about trying to uh, catch up because that's where, that's where the rest of the OEMs are. We're not, in a, we're not in a time when you can waste time or think about uh, things for a long time. If you're in the automotive business, I, I think it'd be a good idea to figure out how you're going to compete what you're going to do to compete. And if you use General Sun Tzu, he said, know your enemy, know yourself, win every battle. Do you know yourself? I'll bet you don't know your enemy. It might be a good idea to really seriously take this business to heart. So anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you again for uh, visiting us. Um, uh, please tip your cashiers. And once again, have a great day. Bye now.
Hey, welcome to Monroe Bonus. Let's have a look at this. So this is the left hand and this is the right hand body control module. Watch this. Oh my goodness, they populate both boards at the same time or at least use the same substrate. Okay, now for those of you who didn't watch, you're out of luck. Have a great day.